Hi friends, Katie here. I have a box. I don't usually do unboxings on this channel, um, but I wanted to do this one and that's where we're at. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to do too much chit chat. This is from Atlas Stationers. This is a milestone pen for me in a couple ways. I say as I go straight into the chit chat. Um, it's a milestone pen for me because it is the first and perhaps only, which is fine, uh, thing t that I can get with my Atlas affiliate. So I'm really credit, I'm really thankful for the people who have used, um, who have used my account, uh, like my, my, um, link and it it means a lot to me it really does and this is a pen that i have been eyeing for a while so it's already in the description you know what it is it is the uh, visconti mirage mythos so they're like steel nibbed entry level pen i actually have been eyeing visconti for a long time but i I'm just like not comfortable with the price point. Um, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not for me. Oh, this is the new little, little envelope. I saw Drew Brown on Goulet do this for the new um, color. So that's very tactile. I don't know what to, how to repurpose that in the future, but I want to. It's a very nice, I like this color gray box too. But anyway, this is the Visconti that I've been wanting for a little while. So when they brought out these as um, a new kind of like entry level, I mean, um, I was intrigued because for one thing, they're really pretty. Um, they come in a bunch of different colors, like five different colors, and I really like four of them. <laughs> um, but I've always been enamored with the bridge clip. Um, I particularly love the enameled ones. This one is not. This one's like laser engraved. Um, but but I didn't really have a use for it, and I just didn't. I hadn't, I hadn't bought it. And then I started my um planner pen investigation and when it comes to a planner pen what i was looking for is something where i could easily swap nibs something that didn't have a screw cap and this one is magnetic and like a nice firm magnet i heard some people complain about the magnet for the posting although it seems strong enough to me. I'm not really a poster, but I like that it can post. So when I'm thinking about like a pen that I'm going to carry around with me, sorry, this is going to be an incredibly fidgetable pen. Um, what I wanted was snap cap and uh, a good clip and an exchangeable nib. And part of why I held off getting on the Visconti for a little bit, it was, I wasn't really sure what the situation with the nib was, but, oh, there's a little, there's a, I don't know that you can see that. There's an interior cap in there too, which is nice. This, I like a lot. Um, and so I did some research and I'm pretty confident of how I can um, swap the nibs. So we'll get into that, but let's first bring out its compatriot. So I bought that to go with this little bundle of joy. This is my passport planner in my like trifold rings and sterling ink planner. I've lately had the Lamy 2000 pen in it although before that I had the recently I had the Pilot Pereira on it it comes and goes um what my planner pen is but I just haven't been like super happy with any of my options that's just me being picky but I also like wanted to have 
multiple things that I could use. So it also needed to be five and a half inches tall, which this is perfect. And again, that nice clip action, really, that, that's some of the best clip for this because I need to be able to take it off easily, but put it on one handedly because I need to hold it in my other hand. And then the magnet is plenty strong for this. I mean, it doesn't get kicked around too much. So I had a trouble choosing what color to get to be honest with you because I really liked this color and I was afraid when I bought this leather cover I was like it's too of a, much of an exact match like I should get a coordinating color and not something that's such a perfect match so I thought about getting some of the other ones but really my heart wanted this one and I think it's a pretty unusual color to be able to find in a fountain pen and I was like am I really going to let $20 of leather that I am going to swap out to other colors like influence a $160 pen like that seems silly so I talked myself out of it I, like out, I talked myself out of talking myself out of it um I figured that uh it wasn't going to clash and it does not it's like very matchy matchy but that's fine but I think I've been using this for two months now and I love this color but I'm gonna probably have two or three or four different colors that I swap in and out and so I'll just buy ones that coordinate nicely with this I think maybe my next one might be like a minty kind of green um and so I was like don't don't let that don't let that stop you Katie that's silly so really thrilled with this clip action uh, you can tell I keep doing it but it fits really really nicely here it's the perfect height um it's a little it's jutting out a little my my um pen loop situation is a little weird sometimes but we can do it like that if we want and it juts out a little less so I'm here with my little little cat clip oh it's a whole thing okay the other thing I carry around with me is a Pilot Parallel that I've nib swapped in, and so this is my little packet. So, it's not like the most compact, but it's very efficient for me, and I'm, I'm so thrilled. Um, and I told myself if I really fell in love, I can buy them in other colors at some point if I want to. So, I actually have been chatting so much that I have not been talking about what this actually like feels like in the hand. It's surprisingly heavy, which I don't mind. I, I think it feels like weight isn't a description of luxury really. Like that's not a good way of talking about it, but it, it does feel kind of luxe in the hand. It's got a nice weight to it in both halves. Back with with when it's posted, it's like it's too long and it's too heavy for me. But if I were somewhere where I'm like taking out my planner and there's nowhere to put the cap, like I can do it. It's not, it's not a big deal. And I wanted one that was postable so that if I really had nowhere I could to put the cap, I could put it on there. Cause some are like totally not postable at all. I'm sorry, I'm gonna click this so many times during the course of this video. <laughs> I got it with the medium nib and I angsted quite a lot about what nib to buy but I think I'm going to want to get it custom ground and I think the medium is what I want and as we've talked about there's going to be some nib swapping action and so um, I already had a fine that would work. So we'll talk about the nib swapping in a moment, but maybe let's just give this a quick dip. I find the grip, I mean, obviously I haven't written with it yet, but I find it very comfortable in the hand. It's kind of reminds me of my Estherbrook, um, which is actually the thing I'm going to take the nib out of. Maybe it's a little thinner than the Astrobrook, but it's got that same kind of straight column kind of feeling with then just a little, little something at the end to prevent you from sliding off. And I find the Astrobrook to be quite a comfortable pen for me. And I tend to be like a, 
a nib hugger and so my fingers tend to get closer and closer to the nib and I actually really like this engraved um, feeling here. In terms of this thing here, uh, I'm sure that some people it would bother, but I have small fingers. My fingers aren't touching it at all. It's not sharp by any means, but it might feel like a little bit of a weird step up. I don't know. You'll have to ask, find someone who, who holds it further back to see how they feel about it. It feels weird to me, but also feeling it feels weird because that's not where I hold my pen. Um, and then it's got these really smooth facets, which is nice. It's not, it's not really going to go rolling. I mean, it's a little rolly, but it's not terrible. Um, but I really like the smooth facet look, which, as you may know, because I've got several other faceted pens. So, shall we dunk it? Let's dunk it. Let's find a piece of paper. So my, and then I really have no idea how wet this Dante nib is going to be. I'm going to like just dunk it in this Diamine Oxblood, which is one of my favorite inks and one that I have not used in a while, but I'm not currently feeling certain. Yes, I can dunk it. Let's give it a little dunk and then we can test it out, but I'm not going to ink it. I don't think with this medium lib unless it has like an amazing reverse writing experience. So this is the Visconti Mythos, Mirage Mythos. It's got too many words. In the color Aphrodite. I mean, this is a glorious medium nib. Medium nib is not my go to, but it's incredibly smooth in all directions. Like really, as medium nibs go, really nice to the point that I'm like tempted not to grind this individual one. Oh good. The problem with ox split is it does look like you're bleeding <laughs> when you get it on your hands, which I am definitely doing. Uh, yeah, that's a really nice nib. Let's see how the reverse writing is. Yeah, the reverse writing is sharp. It doesn't want to go in all directions. And I could do something about that. But um, when I'm writing in my passport planner, I need to be able to write really small. So I'm going to use a um, specialty nib. So I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to get this ink out of my pen. I'm going to do some behind the scenes stuff and then I'll come back. All right. We're somewhat clean now. Inky fingers. It's part of it's part of the charm, but maybe don't use ox blood in the future, Katie. Okay, now we're getting to the nib swappy part. And again, this is my general disclaimer that don't do anything that feels bad, that doesn't you know that you're not comfortable with, you know. Don't, don't, don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. If it feels wrong, like, stop. Here's what I'm going to do, and we'll see if it feels wrong, but I don't think it's going to based on my research. So this pops right out, just a metal section. And to the abs astute observer, it's exactly the same as this Schmidt nib came with my venue. So let's just get that right in there. Now I don't love this nib to be honest with you. Uh, I will be mixing metals here. Your comfort level with that may vary, um, but I'm not going to let it stop me. I don't love this nib. Uh, I was disappointed when my venue came with it. It came with this um, Earl Grey, which I've been meaning to talk about, but haven't, um, because I found it to be, well, it had baby's bottom, and it's uh, a little stingy, but because this is a planner pen, and I'm writing in these, like, tiny columns, they're, like, 20 millimeters, yeah, and, like, three quarters of an inch, um, tiny, 
tiny um, columns, I need to write small. And so I think actually the stinginess might to be to my benefit. Okay, this is the Birmingham uh, black uh, gunpowder because black tends to be my lighter pen color. I usually use Diatriment as document black and I might, but here while I'm messing around, I don't feel like dealing with a pigment ink. So I just gave that a slight dunk. We'll see if that's enough. Yeah, so here we go. There's something in the nib. <laughs> Let's find. So I might want to get some work done on this nib, but I actually have more. I have more weird options yet. So I put enough ink in there. What I'm really hoping to get is um, a reverse architect. And I have a medium reverse architect. Um, it's just in this pen here, which is inked, which may not stop me, um, but that that's one step further down the, the crazy train. So we're, we're doing it in steps and we're ending very inky. So, that totally works. Can I write as small as I want to? So here's a column and it's usually five, I think. What might I sometimes want to write in my planner? Things like laundry. Yeah, things like call mom. Yeah, I can write. Am I, am I wrong about the size of these columns? I don't think so. So here's, here's what it usually looks like down here. So uh, things like film quarterly, I don't think it was going to fit, but it didn't really even fit in that one. I actually usually put the little dot here. So meal plan. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine in the meantime. Um, you know, maybe it's not quite as fine as I'd like, but it's not far off. We can try what the reverse writing on this is. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty unpleasant. So that will totally keep me busy while, you know, I wait until I have the opportunity to get this one ground down. But that's not why you're here, right? You want weirder things yet, don't you? Except that this is going to mix up two of my inked pens. Oh well, we're here to play the game. Let's do it. So that is just a one-to-one -one swap with the Schmidt nib, which is easily gotten in silver from the new. Gold spot sells them. Um, so not get black ink all over me. Uh, but I did post a video, uh, and I'll link it here, about how I nib swap in my Banu. And this, uh, I'll link that video. This uses a Twisby 700, VAC 700 R nib unit. And again, don't do anything that feels bad. Don't do it. But it just kind of slides in and out, and I think it should here as well. Now I've got green ink on me. I'm just really doing the whole thing. So that totally works. That one's fine. But, so this is the Twisby nib, and that works great. One can, if one is looking to, and we'll see if this works great or not. Just, we're just, we're just messing with all the stuff here. All the ink pens are just doing it. This is why you come here, right? That's my... Oh, man. It's such a mess off camera here. Like, totally... 
going crazy. So if I do this, I'm not going to be able to have, I have too many, I have too many pens all trying to use the same parts at the moment. Um, so I need to buy some more nibs or nib portions. So this, the curvature on the Yovos isn't exactly the same as on the Twisby, but they do fit, I'm pretty sure. I'm just trying to remember if they're keyed. They do fit not as nicely though. Like it, you know, it's a little more pressure to push. Um, at least in this metal grip section, I'm like not worried about splitting it for like the, um, I feel like this should go in a little deeper than it currently is, but maybe that's as far as it will go. Um, let's see, we need, we need some ink. Blue that's in this Esther book. Mm. No, I think we're going to need the converter that's in that video. So we'll connect that. Give it a little prime because we've messed with everything. I think that's good enough. Where is the base? There's just There's just parts. Okay, I'm about to lose battery here. So let me give this a quick test and then we will come back after I have played with things and charged my phone. Oops. All right, this is leaking, I think. But, or it did, I mean, I primed the feed, so maybe it won't keep leaking. But now this is my needle point with my reverse architect on here. So, I'm losing battery. I'm going to mess around with this, make sure it's not leaking, come back in a little bit, and tell you how it's going. Oh, well, we may have found our first problem, which is that it does not, it does not fit in here. Which is fine. I knew that was a possibility. It is not the end of the world. I am totally cool with just sticking to the Schmidt nib. So I'm going to, I'm going to go and do that. It's too bad. I wanted it to fit, but there's not room in the cap because it's got that like extra cap in here and it's, it's hitting on something because I don't think I have this seated as far back as it normally does. Totally cool. We can use the Twisby nib, but I think actually what I'm going to use is the Schmidt nib. Okay, so it's the next morning. I've had this Schmidt nib the, from my Banu in here since yesterday afternoon. Since then, I've done a lot of capping and uncapping. No one is surprised to hear that. But I've also done some journaling here um, because I really wanted to make sure the nib was working well, that um, what it was like to hold um, the pen and some other kinds of things that you know from a little more use. So let me tell you a little bit about what I have learned and that might help you decide if this might be a pen that works for you or not because I know that people are intrigued by it but they're kind of worried about some of these, the section in particular. So I did a two-page spread that was in my B6 planner. The nib swap worked great. No leaking, no questionable behavior of any kind. So I think that is safe, which is not surprising. I think it's it's really, with the Schmidt nibs, it's a one-to-one -one conversion. And I think even with the Twisby nibs, that would also be fine, provided that you keep the Twisby and nib in there and you don't try to swap the Yovo in like you saw. That hack, by the way, which I linked below, does work in the Banus. Um, there's enough room in the cap for it, but because this one has the inner cap, it didn't work so well in this particular context. But that hack does work if you want your Yovo nibs in your Banus. Um, as always, proceed with caution. 
so yeah, the nib swap, great. No notes. Uh, I'm very happy about that. The mixed metal doesn't bother me. I am hoping to get some gold ones. Um, FP nibs in Spain sells gold colored, just plain Schmidt number six nibs. Uh, and I'm thinking of buying some of those in a variety of sizes um, so that I can just have them in different sizes, both for this pen and for the Benus. Um, the Benus have silver, have silver on them but a lot of gold so I'm really not worried about mixing metals there and it feels like they'd be handy to have and they're fairly inexpensive although the shipping is costly so you know uh, I might buy a few to make it worth it so that doesn't bother me in terms of writing with it people have asked me what the grip is like because they're worried about the metal grip I don't have any other metal grip ones, definitely none of the like super slick ones that I know people complain about. So I can't compare to that. The non-textured, like, I mean, it's all, so it, it, it's like satin finished and you can see these lines on here. Um, my natural grip is to hold it right on the texture at the front and that works great for me. I didn't have any slipping towards the nib, which is a problem I tend to have in general, um, so that was great. Over the course of the two pages, I did get a little irritation on this um, finger. Not terrible. It didn't hurt, but I wouldn't write my novel with this pen, or if I did, I would be building more callus there. Um, it's not quite as red as all that. I got ink in it <laughs> from the oxblood experiment. <laughs> so that's that's part of it. But it, it, it did get a little irritated over the course of two pages. Not enough to hurt, not enough to stop me. But uh, if you're looking to write lots of pages, that might not be a great outcome. If you are the kind of person who would hold it above that, it doesn't feel super slippery to me. I, I tried a bunch of my like other like just resin pens that don't have metal sections. It doesn't feel to me more slippery than those do. It doesn't feel more textured either. Um, and so I, I really, it's hard for me to say that's not a place that I hold my pen. And I did test it. It didn't feel slick to me. My fingers did slide forward, but that's because they want to be here and I can't. I mean, that is that is my problem in all pens is that I slide to the nib. Um, so not because it is slick, I don't think. Um, but I don't have a super satisfying answer for you on that. Um, maybe other people you'll want to watch other YouTube videos of other people who hold their pens in other places, including people who hold them further back here on the step, because I could see that feeling weird. Um, as I said, it's not sharp. It's got this like interesting angle, but whether or not you'd like it, I don't know because I don't like it because that's not where I hold my pen. So, um, that's what I can say about that. In terms of the section, I had a friend ask if it smelled like brass. I can't tell that it does, um, but I'm not, that's not a thing I'm like super attuned to. It doesn't strongly smell like brass and my fingers haven't. So I don't know if there's something on it. Again, if that's a thing you're really sensitive to, then yeah, I don't know, I would say just trying to see if you can test one somewhere first but I mean I've seen like some of those other brass pens that really smell and this one doesn't that I can tell. It is a little on the heavy side. I don't have the weight in front of me but you will notice that it feels substantially heavier than like an SD for example. Um, it doesn't bother me. Again, I'm not writing a novel um, with it. The Really, the use case for this pen is primarily like quick list making. And so what is comfortable and 
applicable for this kind of list making is different than like intense journaling or whatever. Now I really didn't mind it for my journaling. I would use it for journaling. It's not what I bought this pen for but like I don't think it's excluded from that possibility. I just bought it for list making and so those are some slightly different considerations. In terms of the like resin, uh, I think it came out pretty close to what it looked like in the photos it's got it's got like a beautiful marble effect it's like it's subtle compared to you know my like resin handmade resin kind of pens this one's a narwhal so the pen's not handmade but the resin was um it, so it's very subtle compared to that but it's it's beautiful it kind it looks like yeah, like a marble kind of thing with some other colors in it. There's like a lighter color. There's like a brown. It's got, it, it, it's really, it's really gorgeous. It's not flat. Um, it's represented well on websites. Um, so if you think you might like it based on that, you probably will. I'm currently undergoing some uh, desire to buy more of the colors because I think they're really pretty but I have been liking the newer colors better than some of the older ones um, I like the well this was an original run and I love this one I think the brown one is really pretty um, I haven't I, I don't think of myself as a brown pen person but I do like a good brown pen and I think that it is a really nice looking one the um, Athena one which is the teal color is right up my alley. I didn't get it. I was tempted to. I didn't get it because it feels very um, similar to these pens in color. So I stayed away from it. But the new, um, the new Poseidon one with the gunmetal is gorgeous. So anyway, but me just saying, I'm excited to see where this line expands. I think they're getting better um, with the new additions because both the Athena and the Poseidon were added later. Um, so this might not be my last Viscani. I told Karina, I was like, it's too early for me to say this, but this might be my Esty. Um, and you know, she, she really loves the Esty. Um, and I mean, I like my Esty quite a bit. I think it's a good pen. I just don't think it's better for me in ways that I care about than other pens that I have, like the custom turned ones and whatever. But this this magnetic cap for me is, the magnetic cap and the spring clip are marked improvements to me. I still love the custom ones and whatever, but in terms of like life usability, these these two features really make a difference for me and I really love them and I do love the facets too um so anyway I've blabbered on plenty now if um you're interested in this pen let me know in the comments I, I'd love to hear from people who either have one or are now uh intrigued by them and might want them in the future if you decide to buy this pen you can buy it from atlas uh, for 10% off with my code um, and affiliate. I would really appreciate it. That would help me make more bonkers content like this where I just play with all the nibs and see what happens. So your support really means a lot to me. But if it's not the pen for you, that is totally fine as well. Anyways, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy your day. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I'd love to talk to you in the comments.